This is a certified hood classic. Brand new! Trap right about now, I know y'all digging this, so just, just turn, up turn up your radio, radio wherever you are. We about to bring it. At the count of three, I want y'all to tell me the name of my DJ. One, two, three. Get the Rizzy, Rizzy. Trapaholics like mix it. Hands, everybody. Clap, clap your hands, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you important news. What's up, everybody? Y'all already know who this is. It's your boy, Kevin Black, for the Bread and Butter Podcast, baby. And what an exciting day I'm having doing what I do. You feel me? We got one of the guys in the building, none other, the 515, DMI, Dirty Money Island, finest, baby. None other than my man, Smooth G. Salute. How you doing, brother? Yeah. So, brother, man, finally got you. Yeah, we here, man. You one of my guys, man. You one of them solid ones. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, How was your new year, man? Shit, man, you know, the world we live in today, man, shit, we alive, man, we can't ask for no more than that. Man, you know you're right about that, man. I'm going to have to um, give you some claps on that, you feel me, for being, for being just honest, because um, what's going on in this world today, man, is um, it's more than shocking, yeah. to be honest with you, like, to see, to see people in so much fear. You know what I'm saying? That and these people in fear that um then had their way. Mm-hmm. Like for centuries, decades, they done had their way and because technology, the economy, them not want to re educate themselves right. and just feel like, you know, they everything belongs to them, they truly discombobulated. What's your take on what's going on in the government right now? Well, you know, I see it like this, man. Whenever you don't move with the universe, you know, whenever you build things off of racism, capitalism, shit like that, it's, it, sooner or later it's going to find a way to cave itself in like the Romans did, you know what I'm saying? And I think that we're at that point now. You know, all the shit that uh, America brought to people, it's now it's coming right coming right back in America's face. True. And I don't think they really to handle it. That's why everything looks out of control right now. True. Even the politicians don't know what to do. And you know when it gets to that point, when motherfuckers is running up in White Houses and shit like that. Yeah. You know what? Well, we in a different day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because it's like yeah. man, when you dig deep into that situation, yeah. like you know, I'm watching the reports and I don't really dig too much, put too much stock into what they saying on on, on major news networks. I listen, but I don't let it influence the bigger picture I know I need to look at. You right. feel me? But when I hear about, you know, they got people doing surveillance on the Capitol building the day before, yeah. and they got Republican senators taking these people on the tour, and then they look on camera, and these some of the same people that was with the senators. Right. I say, man, America... It's starting to eat itself. The United States government it is. is starting to eat itself and betray it. And the oath that they stood on, mm-hmm. it was already phony. They right. just now don't even care don't about it. Fuck now. Yeah. They ready yeah. to squash the whole constitution. <laughs> right. Like they they don't care. You right. feel me? And um Bios being guys that come from a world of danger, put like that. You feel me? And for us to make it back. You feel me? Do you think we'll be able to lead our own people when this do go down and get them into a space where, look, we got to protect each other by standing with each other, unified, because that don't got nothing to do with us. Right. But we'll get drew into it if we don't stand together. Well, shit, I think that, you know, our lack of preparation, see, we, we ain't prepared, you know what I'm saying? And not only prepared for us, 
but for our children, you know what I'm saying? Because they setting up a new future right now, you know what I'm saying? Right. And that involves our kids, 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 you know what I'm saying? And so by us not being right. prepared, they going to suffer, you know what I'm saying? See, so we have our age, you know what I'm saying? We have our, our lifetime. Yeah. So, but... The, the the real pain is gonna come with the, with to the to the kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Our children. You know what I I'm feel saying? you because that's yeah. why I, I I put that together when they always talk about the budget mm-hmm. and the deficit and how the kids yeah. gonna have to take care of that. Yeah. And I I know money don't have no value. You feel me? Right. I understand that. So I'm not hearing you, but it's the pain they talking about. Mm-hmm. It's the 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 overall oppression because now they trying to like what Donald Trump was doing, right? He was trying to really just take Washington. Yeah. He won't control of the dollar. Definitely. He just want to deal with the Fed yeah, he's, himself. He's a businessman. Right. He don't, yeah, yeah. I, fuck America. I just want Washington, D.C. Right. You feel me? Now, if I got to tell something in America yeah. to get Washington, D.C., and then by the time the Democrats really see what he owned, mm-hmm. it was almost too late. It was. It is, really. <laughs> you feel me? Because, yeah. I'm, like I was telling my wife, if they would have gotten that Capitol building and took them people hostage, no more American government. Oh, yeah. I think it's like that now. You feel me? Yeah. I think it's like that now because you got to think about it. Even back in the days when, you know, um, there, there used to be mobs of white folks who used to run up in uh, uh, police stations and grabbing black folks out of there just to hang them. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So even with that picture, they it's almost like fuck democracy, fuck Republicans, Democrats. It's, it's ran we by, the mob. It's, it's ran by a mob. It's and so when, the mob. They, when they get to acting up, the police can't do shit. The, the the politicians can't do shit. And that's what everybody needs to be afraid of right there. You know what I'm saying? Woo! Man, they, 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 they've been prepared. That's why they got guns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah and make sure we don't. Yeah, and make sure we don't. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? Yeah. They definitely take away our, our, our liberties at will. You feel me? And that's due to a fact that we don't understand the wording of where they get their power from. Definitely. Because they, they power comes from words. That they done made up. And we don't decipher them. We don't learn them. And we don't participate in it. You feel me? But they speak in code. Yeah, they're talking code. They're moving code. And they and they definitely think in code. You know yes. what I'm saying? And that's why I, like I tell people, everything that they're doing, it's a remedy to it. They got to get you a remedy. You feel me? Because no one is immune from the spirit of God. Yeah, definitely. You feel me? Yeah. Whether you do devilish shit or not, you know yeah. there's mm-hmm. another entity. Power, yeah. Right, you know that. You yeah, feel me? Power. And that's what we need to think about. True that. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the ones who are, who are oppressed, they need to, you know, go back to God right now because that's the only thing you got. If you ain't got no weapons, if you ain't got no army, and if y'all ain't together, shit, then the only thing you got is God. Yeah. You know what I mean? True that. Yeah. How you, um, by you being an OG, down here. Uh, how long you been in the game, fathers? You know, fathers music, music. Well, you know, uh, shit. Ever since I was fourteen, you know what I mean. So you know, I came out of the trunk when I was fourteen years old, and uh, around that time I was just starting to get into the, the to the to the drug game. Okay. You know what I'm saying. So what I did, I took four hundred dollars, came out with a tape, I sold them all, ended up making twenty four hundred. Oh. And so, from that point, I should have kept... A, this is way before Master P and all that. Right. So, from that point, I should have kept doing it. But what happened is that I started investing into the streets. Okay. And then that's when shit took a turn for the worst. And that fork in the road. Yeah, and, yeah. That fork in the road. We all get there. Yeah. And your experience with the gang since then, has it been up and down? Or has it been more just a solid run where you wanted at? Because I, I see you talking about retiring. Right, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And you dropped hella projects this year. Yeah, definitely. You yeah, feel definitely. me? Like, yeah. you you stayed on everybody radar. Definitely. They had to, they, they had to bow down in 2020 when they came to Smooth G. I you feel me? You really yeah. put the OG down. Like, it wasn't nobody in the city, because I'm monitoring everybody. Yeah, I know you watch. You feel me? Yeah, I know you It was watch. nobody in the city that could say, yeah, I'm in competition with Smooth G. Yeah, I appreciate you it. feel me? Yeah, it was it was that. nothing like that because at the beginning of the year, I saw niggas. You know, you had to make certain posts, but by the middle of the year, yeah. you don't have to make them posts no more. Oh yeah, you yeah. feel me? Yeah, I was going it, it was it had oh, he right. That's what I you know. That's the feeling I got yeah. from other artists. You know what? He right. He is OG. Pay homage. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, you definitely. feel me? Yeah, that's why I named my, my series Pay Homage for that fact, what you just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, I'm a, that's a sag, but that was a nice segue yeah, yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, you yeah. Know? But tell me about... Pun intended. What, um... Because you, you got smooth criminal entertainment, yeah. right? And you got artists on there. So how is it being an artist and a label owner? And you have guys up under you that you didn't grew with. Right. You feel me? Like, right. do they have certain roles in the company or are they just paying attention and focus on their on they craft? Well, the thing about it was that, uh, just like you said, that transition, mm-hmm. uh, like maybe 10, 15 years ago, I took a back seat so I can let the younger guys do what they got to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you know how that goes. You know what I'm saying? They, You know, they think they can go off like Kyrie Irving and do <laughs> right, their own thing. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And it don't quite work out. For sure. And so, you know... Then I had to show them that okay, you know, I can be the CEO plus I can I can get out there in that court too. You know what I'm saying? 100. And that's what I did. I got out there in that court and I showed them. But I also try to get them, uh, show them the business because my thing about it, I don't like holding young niggas down. You know what I'm saying? So right. I try you can to take care of your own business. Yeah, I, Let yeah, me show you. Yeah, take care of your own business because it's not about me eating off of y'all. I'm trying to get y'all to understand that you can eat off yourself. You know what I'm saying? And first, and, uh, and we can share some money. Yeah, that's what I did. You know, and then I showed them that you know. Hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. You know what I'm saying? 100. Yeah, yeah. 100, 100. Um, you got a guy on your label that go by D Steel. Yes, yeah, my little You brother. know, I was, um, yep. I had met him before I went to the joint. He knew of me. But then when I came home, I had met him in um, the fort. The fort, yeah. yeah you I feel me? Yeah, yeah. I met him in the fort. And um, D Steel a cool dude. You yeah, feel me? That's my little brother. Um, how you doing? Yeah, he doing good, man. You know, shit. You know, he he was out there in the streets, you know, moving around and shit like that. But you know, as you, as you get older and shit, you mm-hmm. start maturing and shit. And I, and I see him maturing and becoming more of a man now. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. And, uh, you know, but he's like he's like my little brother, little brother, and plus almost like my son because I raised raised him ever since he was like eight eight years old. You know okay, saying? okay, yeah. okay. So that's a is a it's a deeper bond more than the streets, more than rap. Oh, yeah, it's it's yeah. a family yeah, of, yeah. like a blood tie. Yeah, I thought that's what's up because. He definitely a, a good dude. I done had to, like when he was in the fort, I done had to put him to the side like, bro, Yeah, I know you two people. Yeah, You're smarter than what you're doing. Right, you right, feel right, me? Right. And he didn't hit me with the woo-woo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he was always real about how he was going to lay his leg down. And that's what I liked about him. Yeah. He, he wasn't the type of guy that had a way want to hide from his consequences after he made that move. Yeah, yeah. He, you feel me? He, he stood up. He like, like man, I took the chance. Hey, yeah. no problem. But I want to get into this 69 to a smurder because you have so many guys out here playing this role of the, the killer. Mm-hmm. And you have real killers that wouldn't dare you see what I'm saying? Right. And I think it's like the 69 to a Smurder song. Like, how do you think these guys get so much attention for being so phony? Well, like I said, you know, these labels are involved. You know what I mean? The like YouTubes and so on is involved. And um, they're trying to take away the strength from the streets. You know what I'm saying? And um, I made that, what's the 69 to a Smurder? Because... There is some guys out there that's who's holding the streets and holding himself accountable, like a Bobby Shamurda. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Somebody who took time off his homie. You know what I'm saying? So he can get less time. Yeah. You know what I mean? You ain't seen nothing like that. You know, you Man. Know, especially amongst these young niggas. Yeah. And then you got the Takashi, you know what he's about, you know what I'm saying? Right. So on and so forth. So I, le- I had to let you people know that, yeah, there's some phonies out there, but then you still got them real ones out there, and then they needed to be celebrated. You know what I'm saying? True. Because that's why I got you here, bro. You know, right now, you know, it's the snitches and the fake ones who are getting celebrated, and we and we can't mix those two together. You know what I'm saying? But Bobby showed us that there there is real ones out there still. You know what I'm saying? And uh, real tough. You know, those ones we need to salute. Those you know what I'm saying? Hey man, yeah. matter of fact, let's jump off into this '69 to a murder, baby. Y'all hearing it on the Bread and Butter Podcast, hosted by your boy Kevin Black. We got none other than Smooth G, the HNIC, a smooth criminal entertainment. You feel me? Let's jump off into this joint. 